Nikki. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. I'm using my iPad to film this video and I don't know how I feel about it but we're just gonna roll with it for today. So in today's video as you can tell by the title I'm going to be answering your guys's questions about sonography school and sonography in general. I have left a pinned comment in all of my videos in regards to my sonography journey on my channel telling you guys to leave me questions or any questions that you guys have for me um and I left that comment like seven months ago and I am so sorry it's taken me this long to make this video but you know sonography school in itself is a journey and then when you add your personal life and things like that it's a whole other thing so I apologize but we are back I am currently in my last semester of school I will be graduating in December so I just wanted to share with you guys some more of like experiences that I had and I feel like I'm more equipped to answer the questions that you guys have for me now versus you know seven months ago so let me pull up what I'm just gonna basically do is go through like all of the videos that I've posted on sonography school and I'm just gonna look at the comments and you know look at what you guys have to ask me so it's so interesting to see certain comments because every school in every state does it so differently where like there's certain schools that require an interview and my school personally didn't so it's so interesting that you know every school in every state does it so differently so one of the comments i have here is like do i need to work experience to get into sonography program i'm at community college there's an admission to get in do i need previous work experience um every school is different every state is going to do it differently for my school personally um it's either you had to have like worked in healthcare for a certain amount of time maybe it was like a year or two years or you had to complete an allied health program before applying which I did which was the PCA program that I did that was three and a half months so that worked out perfectly because it was right before the application deadline um so yeah my school did um every school is going to be different sometimes they do want you to have work experience in healthcare, um but some most of the time you'll be able to complete like a PCA slash CNA program at like your community college um in like replacement of that but check with your school's admissions just to make sure someone said I'm looking for a hybrid class or something online I want to be able to work my part-time job and be home with my kids anyone know of any accredited programs in New York City so if you guys know of any of those please let me know down below um but I know that there's some programs especially like after COVID that were doing hybrid um but I think a lot of it now is reverting back to in class in clinical or like where you'll have class in school and then clinical at the hospital or office versus class online um, but I would just kind of look up um, accredited schools in your state and kind of see like what their curriculum is so that you can see if it's you know online classes and then just you know in-person clinicals or if it's going to be in-person classes and clinicals but if anybody has any information on that and you guys live in New York please let us know down below so that we can share and spread that information because I think that'll be great someone said I want to do it but it feels impossible how am I supposed to go to school and not be able to work? I don't have anyone to take care of me. Most programs I've looked into require you to be in school full time and clinical. Honestly, I think that that kind of comes like with the sacrifice for schooling. I totally understand your comment and it's honestly really hard. I do work while I am in this program. I've had people that I know who were unable to work while doing this program and for me it was just important for me to keep my job because I like my job and also they were very accommodating of my school schedule hi popping in um also what you can do too is like there are a lot of scholarships available as well to help you know pay for school so I know that sdms.org when you're a part of like that organization like they have a lot of scholarships that they'll offer um, and you can kind of look around for like local scholarships or even from your school scholarships that'll help you because I know that there's a lot of them out there and maybe you'll be able to get one of those and that could really help too. 
and I don't want to make it sound like sonography school is like a burden or it's like not fun because it really is but there's moments just like in every program where you're like oh my goodness why is there so much work to do why is there so much to learn how am I gonna know all this how am I supposed to know all this what am I supposed to know for the registries how can I memorize this book front to back to know for the registries but when you're in clinical and you're applying your knowledge and scanning patients and helping them get like the correct diagnosis and you know why they're having this pain or why they're experiencing this and you're able to send those optimal images to that radiologist to help them you know kind of pinpoint that issue i think that it's so worth it and also i've had patients who have just been so sweet you know in their tough times and who have been like it's okay sweetie you can scan take as long as you need like you know we need new new sonographers or we need new medical professionals we know like it's just a constant thing and it's sweet and you know once you start the program and you meet those people and like they've kind of they make you feel like it's worth it and don't get me wrong there are patients who you know they're very sick they're in pain and you know they're not as tolerable to the sonographer or the students um in those moments and those moments can be hard and frustrating because you're like why is this patient so mean um but i think it's in those moments where you experience the patients who are you know able to be so nice and tolerable through their pain and then also the patients who aren't able to and that's okay like that helps you grow you know even in that moment you may be frustrated but that helps you grow as a future tech it helps prepare you for how to handle those situations how to speak to the patient like it really prepares you i think and um i think it just really teaches you a lot um i had a comment that started that came from two months ago that said i start my program next week super exciting it's going to be a lot of work but i'm ready for it and i just want to say good luck i hope that it's been a really cool journey for you definitely is a lot of work but I think it's worth it in the end and I think you fall more in love with this field and with ultrasound as you continue to learn about it and actually perform exams so I hope that school is going well for you if you want to give us a little update down below on how it's going like feel free um and I'm super happy for you and I hope that it's all going well someone said ah it would be my dream to get into a DMS program. My only obstacle right now is getting accepted. I totally, totally understand that feeling. Um, but you will, you know, whether it, you know, is right now or in a year or whenever, like you'll be, when it's your time, it's going to happen for you. And I know that that sucks to sometimes hear like, you're like, well, I want to get in like tomorrow. And that's not always going to be the case. It can be. And sometimes it isn't. But I believe that, you know, if you this is what you really want to do and you put your mind to it, you'll be able to get accepted and you'll be able to, you know, get into that program. Um, just keep doing your research. If you don't get into one, you know, apply for another. I think I told the story. I don't know. I don't remember what video it was, but basically when I got accepted into the program that I'm currently in, I was filling out an application for another program. Always have backup options. I know that it can be limited to, you know, depending on your state because there's not always, there's only so many accredited sonography programs, which is annoying. Um, but keep your options open, keep doing your research and, you know, um, keep positive thoughts because I think I'm, I'm a firm believer that positive thoughts will bring out positive results um yeah just bring out positivity I give you all my positive vibes and I hope and pray that you get into the program of your dreams and you get into the program and you're able to complete it and do your best so someone asked as an ultrasound technician are you guys always exposed to dim and dark places when working or it really depends on which division you are at what percentage of the time you are exposed to dim lights my eyes are pretty sensitive and i get dizzy from looking at my phone in the dark this probably isn't for me what do you think um so it's not like a radiologist reading room like i've been to like radiologist reading rooms and it's like dark and like you'll see like really pretty fish tanks or something i don't know maybe not every radiologist is like that and i was like okay like this is cool and then i've had like a radiologist reading room that like was dim but it wasn't like dark dark so it just depends um at my site 
basically the type of lights that we have in the room like you can dim them i don't think it's really like personally for me i'm not going to scan while all of the lights are on because it just can make the um screen of the machine harder to see you'll get like little reflections of like the light on there and i just don't typically like that so i will dim the lights you don't have to have the room completely dark it all depends on like what your eyes will be able to kind of pick up like in whatever setting so i think that i mean if you're not comfortable with it i'm not sure i mean you could always try it out and see how that works for you or even get with like your ophthalmologist and kind of see like you know what you could do because if this is something that you want to do you want to see maybe if like they have any recommendations of certain glasses or contacts that may help you with that like adjustment to dim lights um but i don't think it's that bothersome to be honest with you if you are not comfortable in a fully dark room with like a bright screen in front of your face then kind of adjust the lights to what you're you know able to kind of perform in and I think that that should be fine but again I'm not the best with that because I don't really have too many vision issues okay we're not gonna you know jinx that um but yeah you can always try it um and see and then talk to like your eye doctor on like maybe what they think would be best for you have another question is your sonography program full-time how do you manage work and also do the program also are you doing any clinicals sorry so many questions i am just now about to start my prerequisites you can ask me all the questions in the world about this i do not mind um it won't take me a long time to get back to them as it did this time but next time don't worry it'll be like quick um yes my program is full-time how do I manage work and also do the program? So like I was saying earlier, my job has been very accommodating. So I work one day a week um, and that's helped me during holiday or during like certain breaks, I will pick up more shifts. Uh, but me and my manager have just like a great rapport with each other and I'm able to communicate, you know, my availability with her and she's able to reflect that on my schedule. Now, I know that not every manager I feel like they're supposed to be like that, but not every manager will be like that. And not everybody is working in retail or a field that will be able to be that accommodating. Um, but I do. So my job is technically part time and it works that way. There's been times where even for that one day I got to call out because I'm like, I am overwhelmed. I am stressed. I have two exams on Monday and I need to study. And, you know, that's okay. Um, I'm also doing clinicals. So yeah, I'm also doing clinicals. So right now I do clinicals four days a week and then class one day a week, work one day a week. It's a lot, <laughs> but you know, busy six days, but I think it keeps, keeps my life interesting. As you get into your program, I know you said you're studying your prerequisites, but even now with classes and you can kind of see how you feel about working and like your study habits. I think it's all going to be tailored to your guys' personal study habits and how well you guys focus. I know people who are able to work somewhat of a full-time job or maybe they moved to part-time and then there's people who just weren't able to work and that's okay. I keep my job because it is like a stress reliever for me um it's the one day where i'm like all right you know i love ultrasound but i don't have to think about it too much today um which i think we all need sometimes so yeah it depends on your program but i think programs in general can be pretty rigorous especially because they're not too long like i said mine is only 15 months but you'll kind of learn there was a point in time where we were I think in clinical three days a week class two days a week but my class got out at a certain time so i was able to work like evenings and that was a lot that was like spring semester that was a lot for me um but i did it i don't know how i really don't but i did um but you know you guys will all kind of figure out what's going to be working for you. I think everybody's experience in sonography school is really personal to them. So how many hours a day would you say that you spent on school slash studying? So I feel like my days were like 10 hour days. My days were like 10 hour days. Um, 
going to class because we had we would have class from like eight to like three eight to four i'd come home i'd study and i go to sleep if i have clinicals our clinicals are eight and a half hours long i gotta get home i'm gonna study a little bit and then i'm gonna go to sleep so they're pretty full-time days um somebody asked me if sonography school is harder than nursing school i don't know i feel like each field in the medical field is rigorous um to its own degree i feel like nursing has so much more to do with like the care of the not the care of the patient but you have to know everything and in sonography we learn everything too we learn how everything functions how it's supposed to be functioning how it's supposed to look what symptoms a patient can have if like something is not functioning properly and so on and so forth um i don't know i would say i, I wouldn't say that everything in the medical field is equally as rigorous but i think that everything in the med medical field is rigorous to like its own degree if that makes sense did I get my prereqs at college first, then enroll in a school program, or did you just sign up for the program out of high school? So, one of my videos I talked about this. So, no, I did not go into the sonography program straight out of high school. I don't really think you could do that unless, like, you dual enrolled and, like, did your prereqs like that, like, maybe your junior, senior year. Um, so I got my associate's in arts degree because I was already on track to get it. So I said, I might as well finish it. I used my last few credits to get my prereqs. So prereqs for sonography included like, um, anatomy, your general courses. I had to take biology, stuff like that. Um, but I used those all to get my associates cause I was already so far along in it. I said, I might as well get my degree instead of like, just not finishing it um so i don't really know i don't think there's a way to get it like right out of high school i think you'll have to at least spend like a year two semesters three semesters something like that to get your prerequisites no you can probably get them in one or two depending on how much workload you want um so yeah i did not go into it straight out of high school i did my associates it took me a little bit longer to get my associates due to some health issues but I got my associates and then I applied to the program because that means I had all my prerequisites done do you work while going to school yes is there math in a sonography program so like basic math kind of so for physics because you need to pass your physics board before you're able to not before you're able to take any other um focused registry but if you take like OBGYN and pass it but never took physics or failed physics you're not technically a RDMS um so there is some math and physics there you are going to need to know like conversions so you're going to need to know like your metric system and such like that and then there's going to be some formulas so there's going to be formulas on like um the attenuation coefficient and such that's all going to be in your green edelman's textbook now i am no mathematician don't really like math don't even really like physics um but it's kind of cool it's really cool to learn physics and i went through that entire green edelman book for my spi and i passed um so yes there is some math to it i don't remember the registry asking me to like calculate anything um if anything it'll just be more so like okay so i'm gonna say something like really silly but like okay so this is something i meant to say inches here i said centimeters okay don't get on me but i meant to say inches how many feet is that like not so basic but basic math like that and it'll give you options and typically the way that the trip you up is it'll give you like all the same answer let's say the answer was 0.6 but it'll give you um millimeters meters microseconds seconds and you'll just need to know what um unit that the answer is in rather than the actual like answer there's a tip for the spi Am I taking an online program? No. What laptop do I have? I had a MacBook Pro, but it crapped out on me. I still have another MacBook Pro, but I am basically using my iPad Pro or my iPad Air, sorry. And iPad Air helps me out a lot. But yeah, I purchased an iPad Air um, 
during my first semester and it is like the best investment that I've ever made in myself. I'm like, oh my God, because I literally have everything on here and I can take it with me to clinicals for study purposes, like whenever I need it. Like it is, if you can, or like I would invest into like an iPad because it is the best thing. You can connect to Wi-Fi. I didn't do it with like the whole, um, what is it? I don't need to call nobody on here. I just need to be able to connect to Wi-Fi and to access my classes, access my notes and such. And it's been awesome. Next video. This is going to be such a long video, guys. Okay. Are you guys having fun with me? Like, are we having fun with the chatting? I know I'm being, like, not nonchalant, but I'm so, like, I'm ready to graduate. Um, and also, like, like I said, you know, you're in this program, and that doesn't mean that your life stops. Um, so I've had some, like, health issues and stuff that I've had to go through, and... Um, it's just, it's been, it's been a ride. I'm still kind of getting over that. So it's been a ride and you guys will be fine. I believe in each and every one of you. If you, this is the career that you want to do, you will do just fine, um, in school and in this field. So, so basically the question from this hey thank you so much for making this video i've been enjoying watching people's journey to sonography school especially yours and doing so much research for myself i'm so sorry that your comment was seven months ago i feel so bad <laughs> um i am also very interested in going into this field i am a bit nervous though i never took general physics and i heard that class is difficult and there's physics for ultrasounds i know as well i always wanted to be in the health field but me and science don't always agree i like science though mostly labs for science do you have any advice for someone like me wanting to go into this field but also a fear since this is such a rigorous program i the way that you just commented was me like i said i generally not too interested in math and physics or math and science so yes you do have to take a general physics course i did that class literally in like right before i applied because i wanted it on my transcript i took like a six-week course hated it um but the physics of ultrasound is very tailored to the machine and the patient like how sound travels etc like what's the speed of sound soft tissue we should all know the answer down below um stuff like that um i think that one of the main things that i guess you'll kind of take from your general physics class is like that metric system and everything like all of that like i don't know I took it because I had to it's not that hard of a course you know just get through that course um and then yeah ultrasound physics sounds hard but once you read the Edelman textbook Edelman really does a great job at breaking it down and that's why I think that's one of the main things you need to study for that SPI so my advice is you know do not be scared um, every healthcare program is going to be rigorous. Every healthcare program has their own specific form of being rigorous. And I think that ultrasound in general has been worth it. I'm so happy with the field that I chose. And I think that you will do great as well, especially if this is what you want to do. Don't be scared of the physics. I was deathly afraid of it. And I was so afraid up until the point, like up until the morning I took my SPI. Um, it's not that bad. Um, it can be a lot when you're first learning it, but once you learn it, and if you have a really great professor who's able to break it down for you guys and, you know, really make sure that you understand those concepts, you will be just fine. Um, there are some people like on YouTube who I think kind of break down ultrasound physics. And if you guys were kind of like interested in that, there's a channel called Sono Nerds, and I believe she is a physics professor for a program and she creates these for her students, but they're also public and my friend in the program told me about this and it helped her a lot with physics and it helped me too and if you guys were kind of wondering what ultrasound physics was like you guys can always watch those videos whether you're in the program it'll help you because she goes by chapter chapter by chapter in the edelman textbook and then if you're not you'll kind of get an idea of what ultrasound physics is like and what we need to know as ultrasound technicians and that can kind of really help you I don't want to say gear your 
like whether or not you want to be a sonographer but that is essentially what we got to know for our SPI so I'm gonna link that channel down below because that was like golden for me and my classmates when we were taking physics still um so i'm gonna link that down below and you guys let me know if that's helpful or you guys let her know because she's amazing um at what she does and how she explains everything so she's great so i'm gonna link that down below but i think it will be fine it can be rigorous i'm not gonna lie but i think you will be just fine especially because your comment sounds just like me when i entered the program and here i am in my last semester having already passed my spi so you can do it do you have to do an essay and interview to get in can you talk about that more so no i did not have to do an essay or an interview to get in but when i was still waiting on the results of my number one program that i wanted to get into i was applying for others and i was writing essays for them the essays are kind of more like about yourself and why you want to do ultrasound i don't really know what the interviews will be like i can only assume that it would be similar but if you guys want to know more about like interviews for sonography programs i'd look that up on youtube because i personally did not have to do that for my program um, but the essays I feel like are pretty general. Um, I just think that you need to make sure like grammar, punctuation, and then you kind of know what you're talking about and like why you want to do ultrasound. Don't just like BS it. I think the honesty is the best policy when it comes to that. So can you take chemistry instead of physics as like a prereq? Um, did you already take statist statistics? I took statistics, <laughs> statistics um, as a prereq, like before my program physics I think is required I feel like it would only make sense because you we all have to take ultrasound physics so yeah I don't know if you could take chemistry instead but look into your program like on the application it'll tell you okay did you take general physics or chemistry or biology or this that so you could do it that way too. Hey, would you recommend getting an associates then doing a program or trying to just get the prerequisites and then do the program I'll be honest with you, for the amount of school that I've done and that I've been in, technically that would place me at a bachelor's degree if I would have, you know, done that. So if you know that you want to do this like right out of high school or you know this is what you want to do, I would look for the prerequisites um, because base a lot of the programs are more degree programs. There's some certificate ones, but a lot of these you'll get your associ your associates in science out of, which I'll be getting to. So I'll technically have an AA and an AS. And like if you put those together, that's four years. Like I should have just did my bachelor's, but I didn't need it. And that's fine. I'm perfectly happy with where I am. So I would recommend you could do your prerequisites and then get into the program. Um but I don't know I just finished my associates in arts because I was like almost there and almost done and I was like well I might as well finish with the prerequisites like the extra prerequisites that I needed for my program um but I do I do recommend maybe doing your prereqs then applying I would do you know your prereqs and then apply but if you're literally if you were like me and you've already been doing your associates for a year and a half finish it off use whatever extra credits you need if they're if they apply to like the specific areas that you need them for use that for your prereqs and it's just easier that way i think it's silly to you know be in the middle of a degree and then like not finish it especially with when it's an aa and you could finish that degree with just your prerequisites for sonography so depends on you this is very good and informative because you possibly link your quizlet and for davies I replied yes three days ago. I will link my Quizlet for Davies below the video that I talked about passing my SPI and below this video. Davies helped me tremendously. So what I did was I wrote out every single like Davies question like for myself just for repetition. And then I, I think I also wrote out like the explanation as to why that answer was correct. Because I think Davies would excuse me take reference points from certain textbooks so i will definitely link that down below for you guys that was like the cherry on top for me are you happy with your career choice yes i'm extremely happy with my career choice i love to see different aspects of sonography um it's really it's very interesting i get to meet so many different people i've even ran into people that like I've gone to school with or that I knew like when I was younger and it's really interesting um you get to see people in different aspects of your life if you're at a hospital that has a labor and delivery section 
or department you're seeing a lot of like heavily pregnant women who are so excited and you know really getting to scan their babies and show them their babies once you're finished there are times where of course we're like a baby will have some sort of anomaly and such and like um you know they're doing the exam to check on that to see if it's not really resolved but kind of how it's going um you know there are times where you get a patient through the er and you're scanning them and they're like yeah um so you know i missed my period and i took a pregnancy test it was positive but now i'm bleeding and you know you put the probe down because we at my hospital we check on top first and you know there isn't anything and there's situations like that that are really hard because especially like you know patients obviously can turn their head and look at the screen um i obviously we are not we're not supposed to be saying anything about that and like i've had patients who have like cried and stuff and like it's sad and like just because like they're like oh my god like where is it da 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 i obviously first of all as a tech you're not supposed to do that so i won't do that but especially because i'm a student i will not do that i will not tell you what i see um especially when it comes to those situations because that is not in my scope of practice i'm not doing that i am not risking my potential job i'm not risking my potential finishing school i'm not risking that that is not my job and i'm not also going to risk telling you false information like even though i know what i'm looking at a radiologist is there for a reason and um it can be hard you know there's patients where you will find like a blood clot doing a venous you know exam and you know there's patients where like you know you're scanning their liver and you see mets like there's a lot of things but the fact that like i'm able to recognize those things and those abnormalities makes me proud that i have paid attention in school done what i need to do because i can tell the text like hey this is abnormal can you come finish the exam i'm just you know just take a look um and we're able to get the, at the appropriate and adequate images to that radiologist to get them that diagnosis so it can be tough but i'm very happy with my career choice and the fact that certain things are a able to be seen on ultrasound and able to help patients get a quicker diagnosis and you know you know get them that next scan that they need to get um i'm very proud to be a future sonographer um but yeah there's definitely a dark side um to it but there there is you know i in general i i love this field and i'm so happy with what I chose to do. It sounded so like negative and it wasn't, but I'm just, I'm trying to be realistic with you guys about it. Someone, you know, someone said, I'd be so nervous for clinicals. Don't be nervous. It is nerve wracking. I can't lie. Last week I started like my last semester of clinicals and I was sweating. I'm at a maternal fetal medicine office and I'm like so excited, but I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, you know, thank God my last sight had OB because I would be like, lost but um don't be nervous for clinicals i think being nervous is a normal feeling but once you get into the hang of it you know you start scanning patients you start to be able to start exams eventually you know one day they're going to be techs who send some of your images like you should be so proud of yourself when you're in those situations or even when let's say there is not there are not any patients make sure that those you know linens are stocked and make sure that things are folded properly make sure that the gel warmers are all filled with um full gels make sure that the machines are wiped off make sure the probes are wiped off make sure the dirty linens are taken care of like you know there's a lot of aspects to clinicals, but as you continue to get through the days and you learn the techs that you're with or tech that you're with, um, you'll kind of know what they like and what they don't like and what, you know, your sh weaknesses as a student or a new tech are. And, you know, there's so many amazing techs out there that are so happy to help, which is amazing. And I am so blessed that I've had that experience. I literally started that mater maternal fetal medicine office last week and I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm gonna work here. <laughs> like, but I'm so scared to take my OB um, 
registry but you know don't be nervous you're gonna get a mixture of people just like in every field there's gonna be some people who are really nice and willing to help you and then there's gonna be some people who it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to break down that wall that they have up but at the end of the day it happens don't feel discouraged it can really suck and there's been moments where i've gone to the bathroom at clinicals i've cried um but that same place that that may have happened at you know i'm you know ending my my schooling there so that really taught me like i was like you know what you know i know that people everybody's different in the way they communicate and i've learned how to communicate with them and it's become such a positive environment it was never negative but i am just like you just learn these pe these texts and like it can be hard as a student you're like well what the heck am i looking at and sometimes people be like oh yeah you know is this that they'll wait till the end of the exam to explain to you or they're like really you don't know what that is i'm like you're like well no i'm a student i'm studying um but don't be nervous It'll be all good and, you know, just do your best. Be yourself. I think that being yourself is one of the best ways to kind of make a really good impression on your clinical site and also for that to be like your potential job um, at that site. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I'm so sorry it took so long to film, but it is here. And I hope that you guys are thriving in your programs. You know, if you decided ultrasound wasn't for you, that's okay. And you know, even though it may get tough, it is okay. I'm telling you, everybody will experience that tough spot in these programs and it's okay. It'll pass. Although in the moment, sometimes it feels like it won't, but it will. And you guys will all do fine. And I'm super excited to hear, you know, your guys' experience in the comments down below. And if you guys have gotten into these programs and what your future plans are, if you're still applying and doing your prereqs, please let me know down below. If there are any questions that I didn't answer in this video for whatever reason, let me know down below. And we will do another video much sooner than seven months, okay? <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Shouldn't be no holder, roller If I lost emotion, show up If you're gonna roll up Leave me on the west side, follow me